Command is dominant in a literal sense, and it's a fun first level spell that offers loads of creative applications. To start, here's a spell description and the classes you can cast it. Now let's dive into 12 ways to use command in your next D&D game. To get started, I'll talk about the five example commands listed in the spell, and then move on to some of my favorite one word commands that are not included in the spell's description. Command number one is approach. The most obvious use of this is for the party's tank to attract a dangerous threat away from their squishy spellcaster friend. This can even result in some nice free opportunity attacks for your allies, depending on how your DM interprets the phrase direct harm. Similarly, forcing an enemy to approach a well-hidden pit trap or a cage is another good use of this particular command. Command number two is to drop, which I find typically comes up around villains holding MacGuffins that you like them to let go of. This can also be used as a way of instantly lowering the AC of a shield-bearing enemy for a single round. Using it to disarm an enemy can also be good, especially if you can make sure that they can't just pick the weapon up again on their next turn, either by taking it yourself or kicking it off a cliff or something. You could also use this to counter an ally being grappled by an enemy. You may need to change the verbiage to release, but I think the concept still applies. Command number three is to flee, which leaves a lot of room open for interpretation mainly as to whether it forces the enemy to dash and whether it recognizes opportunity attacks as directly harmful to it. On the second point, Jeremy Crawford says not necessarily, which basically means it's up to the DMs to decide. For my money, I think triggering opportunity attacks is a fine power level for a first level spell. Other than that, flee is just great for removing a melee enemy from a fight for one or possibly two rounds, depending on how long it takes them to rejoin the fight after their moment of cowardice. Command number four in the spell is grovel, which makes the target fall prone and end their turn. Excellent for humbling pompous nobles and the like if a crowd is watching, although you might get your comeuppance after the fact. In combat, putting an enemy prone is a good way to increase the damage output of your melee friends. Basically, this works out as a 60-foot shove that also takes away an enemy's turn. Pretty nifty, but a little boring if you ask me. Speaking of which, the last command in the spell is to halt, which just makes an enemy stand still and take no action. Since the command spell implicitly eats up the enemy's turn regardless, this does feel like the weakest, most boring option. But if you're happy with the status quo and want things to stay exactly as they are for one round, this can be a good choice. Maybe like a dude is already sitting in a cloud of daggers and you're happy to leave him there? I don't know, I'm spitballing here. Alright, now for a few of my favorite one word commands. First up, the command to drink. With this, you don't need to futz around with sleight of hand checks. Just hand someone a nasty poison, cheers a salute, and down the hatch with the death juice. On the less intense side, you could get an influential person drunk with this trick possibly to take advantage of their state or to weaken their reputation. Six seconds of drinking 100 proof liquor adds up to quite a lot of grog. In a similar vein, you can use command to embarrass someone. A command like dance or fart might work to make a real fool of a noble. Just be ready for the repercussions of such impertinence. As for making someone foul their pants or lose their lunch, I don't think that's something most creatures can do within six seconds. Another good command is to dismount. If you're roleplaying as a ne'er-do-well, this could be handy for banditry and the like. But good guys can also use this to bring a mounted enemy down to their level. Plus, remounting takes half your movement speed, turning a one-turn problem into a multi-turn problem. Just be aware that dismounting while moving is likely directly harmful in most DM's views, so use this before battle kicks off if you can. My next command is Sign. Some adventurers kill dragons, others bilk nobles out of their estates. Or you could acquire a signature, seal, or other proof of ID for later use. The validity of such documents may be questionable if the person you're conning has connections with the law, but it's worth a shot in some circumstances. This next command is a bit niche, but that's to choke. And no, I don't mean literally choke and die. I mean like an athlete choking in a big moment. For example, let's say you or an ally are wrestling with a barbarian chieftain to win their respect. How about commanding them to fall as you shove them, giving the edge and the melee that ensues? Or say that you're watching a buddy go head to head in a jousting tournament, you could shout the command to miss to his opponent as they approach. This stuff's all pretty situational, but I like the general idea of messing with someone's behavior for six seconds to gain the upper hand in a contest. The final use of this spell is very contentious, and that's to betray. The general idea is to incite an infighting scene a la The Lord of the Rings, where one guy stabs his buddy and then they keep fighting even after the initial spell wears off. For my two cents, I think this is a bit strong for a first level spell. Plus, betray could mean a lot of things, and in the context of a fight, it's probably more likely that someone would consider fleeing their friends as the biggest betrayal, turning this command effectively into the same as the fleet command. Finally, I have one tip for making command usable in more situations, and that's to learn some foreign vocabulary. Because the spell requires that the target understands your language. If you only learn the words for the five example commands, that's only a hundred total words of vocabulary or so for all of 5e's languages, assuming you have a teacher or a book to learn these words from. 
I personally think this is a neat little information side quest for a player who can keep a running tally of how many languages they can say grovel in. Those are a few tips and tricks for using the command spell in creative ways in 5e. But to be perfectly honest, in most combat situations, the commands to flee or approach are usually your most effective options, especially if your DM rules that movement triggers opportunity attacks. Speaking of which, let's look at some common rules questions around the command spell. Rule number one is that command may or may not trigger opportunity attacks. To be totally clear, this isn't explicit in the spell's text, and Jeremy Crawford's one tweet on the matter suggests that it's up to the DM. As I've said, my opinion is that it should trigger opportunity attacks, as it seems well balanced for a first level spell. Rule number two is that command's verbal component is not the command itself. The magical words you say for command are separate from the command word. This was made explicit in the Sage Advice Compendium, which stated that the verbal component must precede the command word. This does mean that some of the social situation specific uses I listed above will benefit big time from the use of the subtle spell of metamagic. Number three is that the target doesn't follow the command until their turn. So if you order someone to drop their shield, they'll still be holding it until the initiative order rolls around to them again. And my last rule reminder is that command only lasts for one round, which is six seconds long. So commands that require longer to complete, like sleep or confess or explain, aren't really valid. Sure, the target could try to do what you're asking for six seconds, but you're probably not going to get the result you want. I hope that those command ideas inspire you and that those rules answers make the spell a bit clearer. I'd also love to hear some of your favorite one word commands in the comments. But for now, let's turn to the most important question. Is command a good spell? My answer is yes, command is a fun utility spell that has the potential to swing and counter in both combat and out of combat situations. While saber suck spells can be risky, the ability to upcast command on multiple targets helps to hedge against a wasted turn and spell slot. While it might not have the raw power of a damaging spell like Guiding Bolt, command can create very memorable gameplay moments for the whole table. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you found this guide on command helpful and can show your appreciation with a like and subscribe. It's a massive help for small YouTubers like me. If you have any stories about using command in your own Dungeons & Dragons game or questions about the spell's rules, please share them in the comments below. This is D&D Lounge, wishing you the best of luck in your next spellcasting venture.